Believers in the Lord Jesus think, if their sins are forgiven once, they will gain eternal salvation. And when the Lord comes, they will be directly raised to the kingdom of heaven. In the past, when I believed in the Lord, I thought that too. But what, exactly, does it mean to believe in the Lord and be saved? Does simply having our sins forgiven really qualify us to enter the kingdom of heaven? Those questions always confused me. After I accepted God's work of judgment in the last days, read many passages of Almighty God, saw the mystery of God's three stages of work Almighty God revealed, and understood the mystery of God's management plan to save mankind, I finally had clarity on what it meant to be saved by the Lord. I also saw clearly that God's work of judgment in the last days was the work of completely purifying and saving mankind. For a believer in the Lord, what it means to be saved is indeed a mystery. Without experiencing God's work of judgment in the last days, we have no way to see these mysteries clearly. Where is Brother Shu? He should be here soon. Just wait. Oh. Who's there? It's me, Xiao Shu. Oh, Brother Shu, come in. Okay. I'm here. There was a crowd of strangers in the alley. I thought I was being watched. I waited for them to leave before I came in. Okay. The CCP has been arresting lots of Christians. They have many people watching all the residential districts. There are more seniors with red armbands than ever before. We have to be extra careful. I think, from now on, our groups can't hold meetings in fixed locations. We need to move around. Otherwise, we'll be in trouble if the CCP discovers us. Hey, how are things in your neighborhood? Director Jones, what's this you're putting up? Come take a look at it. Report illegal religious activities based on the law. Illegal gatherings and preachings must be sternly cracked down. The CCP's arrests of believers are getting insane. What a terrible world. Xiaoshu. Hmm? The CCP's arrests are getting more serious. And more people are wearing red armbands on the street. You need to be extra careful when you go out. Choose your words carefully. Don't talk carelessly about believing in God, okay? Hmm. Okay, Mom. I got it. Where is Xu Jutsian? He's not here. Not here? What are you doing here? Why are you searching my house? Answer me. Where is he preaching today? I don't know. Don't know? Search everywhere. Why are you arresting my husband? What law did he break? What law? Believing in God is illegal. He was reported for preaching. That's against the law. We're arresting him. Which law does believing in God and preaching violate? 
You came in and started searching my house without any papers or proof. You're the ones breaking the law. Shut up about the law. Don't hit my mom. Excuse me? Listen here. In China, the CCP is law. If the CCP bans belief in God, then it's against the law. The central government said that we can deal with believers in God however we like. Don't you get it? We don't need a warrant. Chief, we found nothing. We didn't catch him today. He's lucky we didn't. Interrogate his wife. Yes, sir. Mom! Mom! Why are you arresting my mom? Shoshu! Go! Let's go! Mom. Get it! Shashu. Shashu. You fell. Are you hurt? No. What's going Dad, on? Dad, the police came to our house to arrest you. The police came to our house? When they didn't find you, they arrested Mom. Dad, whatever you do, don't go home. That's right. Your house isn't far from here. The police might find you. Right. Brother Shu, you need to leave. Go somewhere and hide. Go into hiding. I knew this day would come. Xiao Xiao, be strong. I need to go into hiding for a while. You're growing up. You need to learn to rely on God and live independently. Fellowship with your brothers and sisters, if you need anything. <laughs> okay. Brother Xu. Go ahead. We'll take care of things at home for you. Yeah. Brother Xu, we just moved to this village. The people here don't know we believe in God. You should be safe living here. Yes, thank you. Brother Xu? Eat something. Okay. After such a long journey, you must be tired. Finish eating and get some rest. We'll talk tomorrow. All right. You get some rest too. Okay. All right. Talk! Talk! Pick him up. Tell us. Where's your church's money? Answer. Who is the church leader? If you don't answer our questions, I'll beat you until you're dead. I'm not breaking any laws. Freedom of religion is written clearly in the Constitution. Everything the church does is legal in the Constitution. What do you want from me? I hope Shinjia is all right. And I hope she'll be able to stand firm under the torment of their questioning. What is God's will? Why did this happen to me? What lessons should I learn? Refinement is the best means by which God makes people perfect. Only refinement and bitter trials can bring out true love for God in people's hearts. Without hardship, people lack the true love for God. If they are not tested within and are not truly subjected to refinement, then their hearts will always be floating in the outside world. Having been refined to a certain point, you will see your own weaknesses and difficulties. You will see how much you are lacking and that you are unable to overcome the many problems you encounter and you will see how great is your disobedience. 
Only during trials will people be able to truly know their real states. And trials make people better, able to be made perfect. While undergoing trials, it's normal for people to be weak or have negativity within them or to lack clarity on God's will or their path for practice. But in any case, you must have faith in God's work. No matter how God works or what kind of environment you are in. You will be able to pursue life, pursue the development of God's work in you and pursue the truth. You will have an understanding of God's actions and you will be able to act according to the truth. This is your genuine faith and this shows that you have not lost hope in God. You will still seek the truth in refinement. You will be able to truly love God and will not develop doubts of Him. No matter what He does, you will still practice the truth to satisfy Him. And you will be able to deeply seek out His will and be considerate of His will. Only this is true faith in God. Brother Shu, you're up early. Brother Zhao, sit. Did you sleep well last night? I couldn't sleep at all. My wife was arrested and put in detention. I'm worried about her. The CCP are cruel to God's believers. I know they'll torture her. I don't know if she can take it. When I was arrested for spreading the gospel, the police nearly killed me. I prayed to God for strength. I stayed strong and didn't betray God. But she's a woman and she's never been through this. What will happen to her if they torture her? If they cripple her, how will our family get by? <sighs> All I can do is pray to God. Hmm. When believers are arrested and jailed, it's a big trial. Your wife is of great faith. I think she will be able to get through it. But torture really isn't easy to bear. The CCP police push believers in God to the brink of death. It's hard enough for men like us to hold up under torture, never mind women. I'm worried that my wife won't be able to stand firm. Or if they cripple her, I'll have to take care of her. How will I have time for the church? <sighs> Just the thought of it terrifies me. But I read God's word and I started to understand God's will. God uses trials to reveal and purify us. He uses these situations to let us see our own corruption so that we can pursue the truth and be purified and perfected by God. God allows the hard times to come. There's his intentions. That's right. This has revealed my true stature before God. Before, I thought there were no limits to what I could renounce. When I was tortured, I didn't deny or betray God. So I thought I had true belief that my faith in God was genuine. I never thought when my wife was arrested that I could be so weak. But my belief is still very weak. I don't have enough faith or love for God. God knows my defects 
and is using this to reveal and perfect me. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Experiencing all manners of trials betters us for our life. God uses trials to help us grow throughout our lives. We should thank and praise God. Thank God. Hey, you're awake. Brother Lee, I was going to come see you. Come in. Okay. Ah, Brother Lee's here. Come in. Breakfast? Okay. Go ahead and eat. I've got some things to do. All right, thank you. Mm. How are things in the church right now? Oh, the CCP government is suppressing and arresting our brothers and sisters. And the forces of the Antichrist are making it really difficult. Many who have just accepted the work of Almighty God in the last days are weak and afraid. When I think about it, I feel a lot of pressure. We must nurture these brothers and sisters, help them understand the truth and remain firm in the true way. There's a lot of work to do. Yes. My understanding is limited. Brother Shu, you're my partner in church work, so I'll need your help. Hmm. If you see problems in my work, point them out so I can correct them. That way, it'll be a big help for the work. Sure. There are a lot of difficulties in church work, so we should rely on God. I don't have a lot of real experience. My view is limited. So if there's trouble in the future, we need to face it together. Mm. As long as we pray, read God's word, and seek the truth, there are no problems we can't solve. Right. I'm also someone with a lot of inadequacies. So if you see that I'm doing something wrong, Point it out right away. That's what it means to act with love. Right. That's what it means to be a partner. Right. Oh, Brother Shu, there's a meeting tomorrow, and there are still some things I need to do. Huh. Would you like to go instead? I'd love to. Brother Wu, you're on lookout duty today? Yes. Keep your eyes peeled. Yes. Go and have your meeting in peace. Okay. Brother Shu, after hearing your fellowship on Almighty God's word, we understand. The work of the Lord Jesus was only to redeem our sins in the age of grace. Yes. And the truth expressed by Almighty God in the last days is to judge, purify, and save man. Amen. But we still haven't experienced God's judgment. And we don't understand the truths about how God judges and purifies man. That's right. Brother Shu, I wanted to ask you, what is the difference between the salvation granted in the Age of Grace and the purification and attaining salvation in the Age of Kingdom you talk about? I wonder. Will the believers who are forgiven for their sins in the Age of Grace be able to enter God's Kingdom? We still lack clarity on this aspect of truth, so please explain it to us. All right. Thanks be to God. I was about to ask that question. This is something we really need to hear about. Definitely. Regarding the relationship between salvation through forgiveness of sin in the age of grace and attainment of salvation in the age of kingdom, Almighty God's Word is very clear. Let's watch some reading videos of Almighty God's Word and then fellowship about our understanding of them. All right? All right. Thanks be to God. At the time, Jesus' work was the redemption of all mankind. The sins of all who believed in Him were forgiven. As long as you believed in Him, He would redeem you. If you believed in Him, you were no longer a sinner. You were relieved of your sins. This is what it meant to be saved and to be justified by faith. Yet in those who believed, there remained that which was rebellious and opposed God and which still had to be slowly removed. Salvation did not mean man had been completely gained by Jesus, but that man was no longer of sin, that he had been forgiven his sins. Provided you believed, you would never more be of sin. The first incarnation 
was to redeem man from sin through the flesh of Jesus. That is, he saved man from the cross, but the corrupt satanic disposition still remained within man. The second incarnation is no longer to serve as a sin offering, but to fully save those who were redeemed from sin. This is done so that those forgiven can be delivered from their sins and be fully made clean and attain a change in disposition, thereby breaking free of Satan's influence of darkness and returning before the throne of God. Only in this way can man be fully sanctified. Man's flesh is of Satan. It is full of disobedient dispositions. It is deplorably filthy. It is something unclean. People covet the enjoyment of the flesh too much. There are too many manifestations of the flesh. And so, God despises the flesh to a point. When people leave behind the filthy, corrupt things of Satan, they gain God's salvation. But if they remain incapable of divesting themselves of filth and corruption, then they will still be under the domain of Satan. People's conniving, deceitfulness, and crookedness are things of Satan. By saving you, God separates you from these things. And God's work cannot be wrong and is all in order to save people from darkness. When you have believed to a certain point and can divest yourself of the corruption of the flesh and are no longer enshackled by this corruption, will you not have been saved? When you live under Satan's domain, you are incapable of manifesting God. You are something filthy and shall not receive God's inheritance. Once you have been cleansed and made perfect, you will be holy and you will be normal, and you will be blessed by God and delightful to God. People's deliverance means that Satan has been defeated. It means that they are no longer the food in Satan's mouth, that instead of swallowing them, Satan has relinquished them. This is because such people are upright, because they have faith obedience and fear toward God, and because they completely break with Satan. They bring shame upon Satan, they make a coward of Satan, and they utterly defeat Satan. Their conviction in following God and obedience to and fear of God defeat Satan and make Satan completely give them up. Only people such as this have truly been gained by God, and it is this which is God's ultimate objective in saving man. If they wish to be saved and wish to be completely gained by God, then all those who follow God must face temptations and attacks, both great and small, from Satan. Those who emerge from these temptations and attacks and are able to fully defeat Satan are those who have been saved by God. Which is to say, those who have been saved unto God are those who have undergone God's trials and who have been tempted and attacked by Satan an untold number of times. Those who have been saved unto God understand God's will and requirements, and are able to acquiesce to God's sovereignty arrangements, and they do not forsake the way of fearing God and shunning evil amid Satan's temptations. Those who are saved unto God possess honesty. They are kind-hearted. They differentiate between love and hate they have a sense of justice and are rational, and they are able to care for God and treasure all that is of God. Such people are not bound, spied upon, accused, 
or abused by Satan, they are completely free. They have been completely liberated and released. Job was just such a man of freedom. And this is precisely the significance of why God handed him over to Satan. No more video for now. Let's read a passage of Almighty God's Word. Okay. I'll read the passage. All right. Almighty God says, What kind of people are those who have been born in the last days? They are those who have been through the corruption of Satan for several thousand years, who have been corrupted to a depth whereby they no longer look human, who have finally been through the judgment, chastisement, and disclosure of the Word of God, who have been conquered and who have then attained the truth from within God's words. They are those who have been sincerely convinced by God, who have reached an understanding of God, who can obey God absolutely and satisfy His will. The end of God's management plan is to obtain a group of people like this. Those of mankind that will be obtained through the entire management plan are a group who can understand God's will, who attain the truth from God, who possess the life and the human likeness which God requires. The group of people who will be gotten in the end are those who will remain in the end. And that group is also those whom God requires, whom He loves, and whom He is pleased with. Amen. Hey, now I'm starting to understand what salvation means. Thanks be to God. Now that you've heard these passages of Almighty God, is the difference clear to you? Yes. yes. Thanks be to God. After He finished the work of redeeming man in the age of grace, why does God still need to judge and purify man in the last days? Yes, yes why? why? The significance here is very profound. Without experiencing Almighty God's work of the last days, we can't understand this aspect of truth. In the past, we believers in the Lord all knew what salvation meant. Salvation meant to be forgiven of our sins because of the Lord Jesus' redemption and therefore to escape being condemned and cursed by the law. To have our sins forgiven was to no longer be condemned by the law. Also, the Lord Jesus, by being nailed to the cross, took on all of our sins. When we prayed to the Lord and confessed our sins, we received the Lord's forgiveness and enjoyed the peace and joy granted by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thanks, be to, Thanks God. be to God. This proved that God had forgiven our sins. Yes. yes. But while the Lord Jesus forgave our sins, He didn't solve our sinful nature and satanic dispositions. We still often tell lies, sin, and hate, and become envious of others. We are still wildly arrogant, show ourselves off, and exalt ourselves, and belittle others. When great trials, such as natural disasters or suffering, befall us, we still argue with God, oppose Him, blame Him, and betray Him. When God's work is not in accord with our notions, we still judge and resist God. So I ask you, with how often we rebel against God, are we qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven? No. The Bible says clearly, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. The Lord Jesus also said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord never said, Our sins forgiven, we could enter God's kingdom. He explicitly told us, that only those who do the will of the Father can enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. Yes. These words in the Bible prove that ideas like, you can enter the kingdom of heaven once your sins are forgiven and being saved is eternal salvation, are human notions with no basis in God's word. Amen. After believing in the Lord for years, we can see that after believers are forgiven for their sins, they still live in a state of constantly sinning and confessing. Amen. This proves that being forgiven for sin doesn't equate to escaping the bondage and restraints of sin, nor does it mean that he is holy. Yes. That's absolutely true. The Bible says, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Based on what the Bible tells us, we can say for certain that if a person's satanic disposition isn't purified, he isn't qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Now let's contemplate a question. What's the question? Why, after we believe in the Lord and our sins are forgiven, do we still sin so often? Why, no matter how hard we try, can't we escape the bondage and restraints of sin? Why? Because in the age of grace, the Lord Jesus did the work of redeeming mankind, not the work of judging and purifying mankind in the last days. That's really true. Christ of the last days, Almighty God, has come to express the truth and do the work of judgment within God's house, primarily to resolve mankind's satanic disposition and satanic nature, to get to the root cause of mankind's sinful nature. Now we all clearly understand why God is doing the work of judging and purifying mankind in the last days. I understand. Yes, now we understand. A passage from Almighty God's Word will make it clear. Can I read the passage? Yes. Almighty God says, A sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus and that you were not counted as a sinner because of the salvation of God but this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean. Yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Amen. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Now do we all clearly understand what salvation in the age of grace means? Thanks be to God. Now I understand a little more. That's true. Salvation means that after you have your sins forgiven, you are qualified to pray to God and enjoy God's grace but your sinful nature is still buried deep in your heart. People are still controlled by their sinful nature and often sin. They even blame and resist God. This proves that people whose sins are forgiven still haven't been gained by God, and they still can't truly obey or worship God. Even though people believe in the Lord and their sins are forgiven, no matter how much of God's grace they enjoy, they still live under Satan's domain they still belong to Satan. It's an indisputable fact. Yes, that's true. But people who've experienced God's judgment, being purified, attain salvation, are different. Because they understand the truth and have true knowledge of God. They can truly hate Satan, forsake Satan, and live by God's words. Their satanic disposition has been purified, and they can truly obey God. In God's eyes, people like this are the ones who have truly escaped the influence of Satan and are gained by God. The ones who have escaped sin and have changed in their life disposition. Right. These people who can obey God are people who have attained salvation. They are qualified to go to the kingdom of heaven and inherit God's promise. This is the difference between the salvation in the age of grace and the salvation attained in the age of kingdom. Is everyone clear on this question now? Yes, I understand it more now. Yes, yes. Thanks be to God. What true salvation means and what it means to be purified and saved, now I understand. Thanks be to God. It's like the window to my heart was opened and everything makes sense. Right. In the past, our pastors and elders always told us that we had gained salvation by faith that being saved once was eternal salvation, and once the Lord Jesus came, we would be raised up to the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we believed. Exactly. But in real life, no matter how hard we refrained, we couldn't escape the bondage of sin. 
we wanted to practice the Lord's word and love and obey the Lord. But no matter how we tried, we couldn't do it. That's true. I was always confused. Could people like us who rebel against God so often really enter the kingdom of heaven? I understand after hearing the word of Almighty God. The salvation we talked about in the past is forgiveness of sin, not to be condemned by the law. Hmm. But without purifying the sinful nature and satanic disposition within us. It's not true salvation. That's true. Almighty God does the work of judging and purifying mankind in the last days. If we accept God's judgment, our satanic natures will be resolved. That's salvation and being saved. Thanks be to God. That qualifies us to enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes, without reading the word of Almighty God, we would never understand what true salvation means. Yes. We would still believe the pastors think our sins were forgiven, that we'd be allowed to enter the kingdom of heaven. Faith without understanding the truth isn't really faith. But now I see clearly that only when our satanic disposition is purified and we can truly obey God, follow His will, can we say we've attained salvation. Amen. Amen. In the last days, Almighty God's work of judging and purifying man is exactly what we need. Amen. Exactly. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Brother Zhao, bad news. The police are here. Go! Oh, the police are here. Hurry. Brother Zhao, get Brother Shu out of here first. Okay, Brother Shu, come with me. Brother Shu, your fellowship was fantastic. It feels like we lack so much without someone who understands and can fellowship the truth with us. If we just read God's words on our own, our growth would be slow and shallow. Um, Brother Shu? Yes? It would be wonderful if you could fellowship with us more often. Sure. We'll have more meetings together in the future. Perfect. Let's go. Fly! Fly! Xiao Xiao, you've played long enough. It's time to do your homework. Go on. Okay. So, there's something that's been confusing me the last few days. I think that Brother Shu's fellowship is very enlightening and very helpful for us. But he doesn't seem to talk about his experience of practicing God's Word. Do you think that's a problem? Oh, come on. Brother Shu gave up his home and family to fulfill his duties. When he was arrested and put in jail for believing in God, he stood firm. And his wife was just arrested and jailed. Rather than complain, he still worked in the church. Doesn't he understand the truth better than we do? He knows how to do his work and give good sermons. Guess so. You're back. So many airplanes. Xiao Zhou was playing with them. Did you eat? Yes. Tomorrow, I'm going to a meeting in the city. I'll be gone a few days. Then I'll make breakfast early grandma, tomorrow morning. Grandma. Mom and Dad are on the phone. Okay, coming. Mom, Dad, when are you coming back? I miss you. Oh, things are fine here. Don't worry. Oh, you'll be back for a spring festival? Okay, okay. Sure, sure. Don't worry about things here. Dear Brother Feng, I hope Xiao Xu staying with you isn't causing you too much trouble. How is she lately? What's happening with my wife? 
Is there any news? Oh, Brother Shu is here. You know, hearing you practice, you almost sound like a real choir. <laughs> we have to do this because of the CCP. Exactly. Using this as cover makes our meeting safer. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's start the meeting. Okay. okay. Hey, where is Sister Ching? Hmm. She should be here soon. She's usually always on time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there she oh, is. Oh, there she is. Sister Ching, you're here. Sister Ching, is everything all right with you? What's wrong? The last few days have been incredibly difficult. I can't go on with my non-believer husband. Just not anymore. Just a few days ago, he found another woman. He took every penny we had, and now he's living somewhere with that woman. What an evil world. When I found out, my heart was filled with hatred. <laughs> I work so hard to run the business that supports my family. <laughs> while he plays around with someone else. Now I don't have any money. How are my child and I supposed to survive? I was furious. So I fought with him. I argued with him. And he... He doesn't even come home. Now that this happened, I feel miserable and weak. <sighs> I don't know what to do. You're going through a trial indeed. As believers, we should know that God rules over everything. There is God's permission and good intentions in everything that happens to us. When this happens, we should ask ourselves what lessons we should learn, what truth we need to understand. We need to discover God's will. Right. We should pray to God and seek the truth. That's the most important thing. Right. Let's read a passage from Almighty God. All right. If you wish to be perfected by God, you must learn to experience all things and be enlightened in all that you face. Whenever you are faced with something, be it good or bad, you should benefit from it and it should not cause you to become passive. No matter what, you should be able to consider it by standing on the side of God and not analyze or study it from the perspective of man. This is a deviation in your experience. If this is the manner of your experience, then your heart will be taken over by the burdens for your life. You will live constantly in the light of God's countenance and will not easily deviate in your practice. Such kind of man has great prospects. Amen. Amen. In every step of work that God does within people, externally it appears to be interactions between people, as if born of human arrangements or from human interference. But behind the scenes, every step of work and everything that happens is a wager made by Satan before God and requires people to stand firm in their testimony to God. Take when Job was tried, for example. Behind the scenes, Satan was making a bet with God. And what happened to Job was the deeds of men 
and the interference of men. Behind every step that God does in you is Satan's wager with God. Behind it all is a battle. You should know that everything that happens to you is a great trial. And the time when God needs you to bear testimony. Amen. Amen. Doesn't God's word explain clearly how we should treat trials and how we should practice and seek entry? As we undergo God's work in the last days, we often encounter trials, setbacks, and failures. But after we experience them, even though we suffer, we understand God's will. We see that all the people, things, and matters we encounter are allowed by God, and all serve to help us grow in life. God uses these things to try and refine us, to reveal our corruption, rebellion, and deficiencies, to make us seek the truth, experience God's word, and grow in life. And we see that God's work of salvation is very practical. That's right. No matter what trial or suffering comes to us, as long as we pray to God, seek the truth, and seek God's will, God will enlighten and illuminate us and lead us to victory over Satan and stand witness. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sister Ching, if these things didn't happen to us, would we clearly see the ugliness of Satan? What proves to others that we as believers walk a different path than the non-believers? How do we testify that we are distinguished as holy from the world? Now do you understand God's good intentions in letting these things happen? What is it that the non-believers pursue? They walk a different path from we believers in God. Are we able to speak in the same terms? No. That's why living with them is misery and torment. If you can understand this fact, you'll know how to treat this issue, how to handle it. You won't be restrained by it. As long as we understand the truth, everything is easy to handle. When we don't know the truth and indulge the flesh, we are miserable. The wise choose to practice the truth and obey God. That way we can escape our burdens and gain our freedom. If we don't pursue the truth and still seek the joys of the flesh, we are in for endless suffering and torment. There's a line from a hymn that puts it well. Without the truth, living is suffering. That's not wrong at all. Yes, yes. yes. that's absolutely right. Yeah. Brother Shu, you're right. Really, when we're caught up, we need to be pulled out. That's right. I'm being too emotional. God knows my deficiencies. He knows my fatal weakness. God allowed this to happen to me, to save me from the constraints of my emotions, to help me escape from Satan's grasp. Yes. This is truly God's love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Even though I've had to undergo some pain and refinement, this is a good thing. I'll start seeking and practicing the truth in this. Thanks, Thanks, to, God. To, God. Thanks to God. I understand when you explain it like that. God's good intentions are in everything. That's absolutely true. When something first happens, I don't seek the truth. But once I do, every problem becomes easy to solve. Right. That's where we need to improve. Brother Shu's sermon was wonderful. Thank, thank God. Thank God. I had no idea how to help Sister Qing experience or resolve her problem. But after this fellowship, the solution is clear. So God's intention was to save us by helping us to escape our desires of the flesh, to help us find freedom in the truth and live in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Understanding the truth is wonderful. Yeah. When things happen to us, we really have to seek the truth. I can fellowship on the truth to help my brothers and sisters resolve their problems. I have had the reality of some truth, which means I shouldn't be far from attaining salvation. Thanks be to God. Now, let me tell you about my own experience. Okay. okay.
Hello, Brother Shu. Hmm. Drying towels? Yeah. Did you go to the meeting? Yes. And? I need help with something. Sister Guo and Sister Shu have been partnered up for a while, and they are both very self-righteous, insist on their own opinions, and rarely listen to others' advice. They always try to protect their own dignity. And when their opinions differ, conflicts always occur. Neither is willing to back down. They can't fulfill their duties peacefully together. My understanding of the truth is too shallow. I was wondering if you could help them resolve their conflict. Hmm. Sister Guo and Sister Shu are capable workers, but they can't forsake the flesh while obeying the truth. Dispositional problems aren't easy to solve. I know. Even if I fellowship with them, I may not be able to help them. They will have to pursue the truth and experience more of God's judgment and chastisement to achieve a real change. Hmm. But I can fellowship with them, see what I can do. If there's still no change and they can't cooperate, we'll have to separate them. That's the only thing we can do. It's really hard to solve people's corrupt disposition. Your solution is a good one. You really do see things clearly when you understand the truth. It's only what I've learned from my experience. Actually, all the problems in the church are simple. It just depends on how much truth you understand. When you understand the truth, you're able to solve more problems. Brother Shu, I really admire you. You can rebut all the rumors of the CCP. You can solve all the problems our brothers and sisters have. I'm sure you'll attain salvation and enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you really think I'll enter the kingdom of heaven? Of course. If you can't enter the kingdom of heaven, none of us can. Brother Shu, let's go. Oh, okay. Brother Shu, I received your letter. Xiao Shu is doing well, and she understands things, so don't worry. When it comes to your wife, we're doing our best to get information. The moment we hear something, we'll let you know. Don't worry. Focus on your duties with the church. Thanks be to God. Our meeting today was very fruitful. It was truly a blessing from God. Brother Shu, I want to say, I've realized you're like me. We have the same problem. In our sermons, we both talk about our understanding, but not about real experience. When we fellowship on God's word, we rarely talk about the corruption within us or how we understand our satanic nature or how we seek truth to solve it and what changes we have made. That's something we both need to work on. In our sermons, we only focus on other people, but we rarely practice the truth. We supply the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, but we don't have any practice. Our fellowship on the truth to others is clear, but we have little of our own reality to offer. This is a problem we both share. In the past, I used to be like this. I was too focused on work. For years I believed, but with no growth, my spiritual stature is still very small. There hasn't been much change in my life disposition. Working and serving God like this, it's hard for us to attain salvation and be perfected. When we believe without gaining the truth, we're likely to stumble and fall when faced with disaster. It's only lately that I've realized this problem. Brother Shu, have you had the same thoughts? Hmm, you are right. I've also been having that feeling lately, but I didn't put too much stock in it. I felt like, in my belief, as long as I can sacrifice, labor, work, and be effective in my duties, God will be satisfied. But now that you say it, I realize it's a problem. Yeah.
being able to blatantly explain God's words does not mean that you are in possession of reality. Things are not as simple as you may have imagined. Whether you are in possession of reality or not is not based on what you say. Rather, it is based on what you live out when God's words become your life and your natural expression. Only this counts as reality, and only this counts as you possessing understanding and real stature. You must be able to withstand examination for a long period of time, and you must be able to live out the likeness that is required of you by God. It must not be mere posturing, but it must flow naturally out of you. Only then will you truly have reality and only then will you have gained life. Being able to speak of knowledge of God's words doesn't amount to your genuine stature. It only goes to show you were born smart and gifted. It's still futile if you cannot point out the way and you are just useless trash are you not pretending if you can't say anything about an actual path to practice? Aren't you faking it if you cannot offer your own actual experiences to others, thereby giving them lessons they can learn from or a path to practice? Aren't you just a counterfeit? What value do you have? You say you have always suffered whilst following God, that you have followed him through thick and thin and have shared with him the good times and the bad, but you have not lived out the words spoken by God. You wish only to run about after God each day and have never thought to live out a life of meaning. You say that in any case, you believe God is righteous. You have suffered for him, run around for him, and devoted yourself for him. And you have worked hard despite not receiving any recognition. He is sure to remember you. It is true that God is righteous, yet this righteousness is untainted by any impurities. It contains no human will, and it is not tainted by the flesh or human transactions. All who are rebellious and in opposition and not in compliance with his way will be punished. None is forgiven and no one is spared. Do you really think I'll enter the kingdom of heaven? Of course. If you can't enter the kingdom of heaven, none of us can. In our sermons, we only focus on other people, but we rarely practice the truth. We supply the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, but we don't have any practice. Our fellowship on the truth to others is clear, but we have little of our own reality to offer. Working and serving God like this, it's hard for us to attain salvation and be perfected. I was lucky Brother Lee pointed it out. After reading God's word, I realized that was precisely my problem. How was I any different than the hypocritical Pharisees? How was I qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven? Brother Fang, bad news. Something happened. Brother Shu's wife was murdered by the police in jail. What? When did this happen? A few days ago, the sub-district officer brought the police to Brother Shu's brother's house to tell him to collect the body. We have to tell Brother Shu. Excuse me, that's the Zhao Zhuang just up ahead? Yeah. What? 
killed by the police. The CCP really is a murderous devil. How are we going to tell Brother Shu? How do we tell him? Brother Zhu is back. You're back. Hmm. Hey, Brother Feng. What are you doing here? I have something to tell you. Oh. Is my family all right? Your wife was killed by the police. How could this be? I have to find out. The police are looking for you. You can't go back. Our brothers and sisters are taking care of your affairs at home. Don't worry about that. years we've been serving you and doing our duties how could this happen to us why god why couldn't you protect my wife Weren't we acting in accordance with your will? <laughs> Sister Young, did you hear about what happened to Brother Shu? We did. We were just talking about that. I'll go see him when we're done. Good. Brother Shu's been through some trials before. He was arrested by the CCP police and tortured, but he didn't betray God. He stood firm and testified. But now, what happened to his wife is no small trial. I don't know how he'll learn and grow from it. Brother Shu, do you feel any better? I never imagined this would happen to my wife. I can't understand it all. I feel tired and weak. This would be hard to accept for anyone. But no matter what, we can't misunderstand and blame God. Your wife was persecuted by the CCP. She'd rather die than betray God or her brothers and sisters. This is testimony of victory over Satan. Right. Think of past prophets and apostles. How many laid down their lives to spread God's gospel and carry out God's will? God memorialized their deeds. Even though their bodies perished, their souls lived on. God orchestrates all things. The Lord Jesus said, For whoever will save his life shall lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Brother Shu, if you can understand this, you won't feel so miserable. You have to be strong. Pray to God. 
and read God's word. When we understand the truth, there's nothing we can't overcome. How many believe in me only so I would heal them? How many believe in me only so I would use my powers to drive unclean spirits out of their bodies? And how many believe in me simply to receive peace and joy from me? How many believe in me only to demand from me more material wealth? And how many believe in me just to spend this life in safety? and to be safe and sound in the world to come? How many believe in me only to avoid the suffering of hell and to receive the blessings of heaven? How many believe in me only for temporary comfort but do not seek to gain anything in the world to come? When I brought down my fury upon man and seized all the joy and peace he originally possessed, man became doubtful. When I gave unto man the suffering of hell and reclaimed the blessings of heaven, man's shame turned into anger. When man asked me to heal him, yet I acknowledged him not and felt abhorrence for him, man went far away from me and sought the way of witch doctors and sorcery. When I took away all that man had demanded from me, they all disappeared without a trace. Therefore, I say that man has faith in me because I give too much grace and there is far too much to gain. Such people have one very simple aim in following God, to gain blessing. And they are too lazy to attend to anything that doesn't involve this aim. They run about for the management of their own ideals. No matter how far the road is, and no matter how many hardships and obstacles there are along the way, they stick to their guns and remain fearless of death. In this, we discover a previously unidentified problem. Man's relationship with God is merely one of naked self-interest. It is the relationship between the receiver and giver of blessings. To put it plainly, it is like the relationship between employee and employer. The employee works only to receive the rewards bestowed by the employer. In a relationship like this, there is no affection only a deal. There is no loving and being loved, only charity and mercy. There is no understanding, only resignation and deception. There is no intimacy, only a gulf that cannot be bridged. When things get to this point, who is able to reverse such a trend? and how many people are capable of truly understanding how desperate this relationship has become. I believe that when people immerse themselves in the joyousness of being blessed, none are able to imagine how embarrassing and unsightly such a relationship with God is. Brother Zhu. Oh, you're here. Come in, sit down. How have you been? Thanks to God, much better. 
Brother Zhao, come in, sit down. Brother Xu, how are you feeling now? Better? Hmm, <sighs> better. Hmm. Your wife. Your wife's death must have been difficult to go through. It's been something that has shown me my spiritual stature. At first, it was very hard to bear. It was painful. I blamed God. I felt that we had believed in God for years and had given up everything to serve him. So God should have protected us. How could he let this disaster happen to us? It didn't make sense to me. My faith and love for God vanished in an instant. I had no desire to serve him. My heart was filled with darkness. Afterward, by praying to God and reading God's word, I began to reflect. When I enjoyed God's blessings and grace, I was grateful to God and had the desire to serve. But when suffering and trials came, I misunderstood, blamed God. I even tried to reason with and oppose God sacrificing and expending like that wasn't really practicing the truth. It wasn't serving as one of God's creatures, repaying God's love. It was exchanging my duties for his blessings, for the peace of my family, for their health and safety. Expending for God is a good thing. But it was just my satanic nature's desire for benefits. I was using my service to God to satisfy my need for blessings. In essence, I was just trying to make a deal with God. Doing my duties like that. Wasn't I rebelling against and deceiving God? Where was my conscience and reason? I think about how many years I've believed in God, how many sermons I've given. I've supplied the Holy Spirit's enlightenment to others but I have no entry into the reality of God's word. And my life disposition hasn't changed at all. It's really a shame. This trial revealed something to me. It exposed that my intentions in serving God were to gain blessings and exposed the contamination in my belief. Believing in God and expending for God like this doesn't accord with God's will or requirements. With such contamination in me, how can I ever truly obey God? Even if I say I love God, it is false. I don't have any reality of truth. Since I was expending for God like this without realizing the problem, God allowed this trial to come. I needed this experience to happen. I know God was trying to save me. But my understanding is still too shallow. Sister Young, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. It's good you understand it like that. You've learned a lot. <sighs> Thank God. Without the judgment of God's words, and the revelations of trials. It's hard for us to know our own corruption and defects. We can't see our own practical problems. We weren't even aware that the way we served God was corrupt. Uh, yeah. We worked for God purely based on our own notions and imaginings. We even thought that as long as we don't betray the law, judge God, resist God, or sin, that if we do some good deeds, if we give sermons, 
It means we understand the truth, attained salvation, and can enter the kingdom of heaven. In the past, when I believed in the Lord, I had the same problem. But after I believed in Almighty God and experienced the judgment of God's words, I saw the truth of how deeply I was corrupted by Satan. I was arrogant, deceitful, and greedy. These satanic dispositions were rooted deep in my heart. They had become my life and controlled my thoughts. They caused me to regularly rebel against and resist God against my will. That's when I realized the necessity of God's judgment and chastisement in the last days. Without God's judgment and chastisement, even if God forgives our sins, we still belong to Satan and resist God. We will never gain God's approval. So true. Let's listen to a few passages of Almighty God's Word. Yeah. Yes. A sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus and that you are not counted as a sinner because of the salvation of God. But this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean. Yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God, for you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. When you were not being subjected to chastisement, your hands were raised higher than all others, even that of Jesus. And you cried out in a loud voice, Be a beloved son of God. Be an intimate of God. We would rather die than submit to Satan. Revolt against the old Satan. Revolt against the great red dragon. Let the great red dragon completely fall from power. Let God make us complete. Your cries were louder than all others. But then came the times of chastisement, and once again was the corrupt disposition of people revealed. Then their cries ceased, and they no longer had resolution. This is the corruption of man. It runs deeper than sin planted by Satan and deeply rooted within man. It is not easy for man to become aware of his sins. Man is unable to recognize his own deeply rooted nature. Only through judgment by the word can such effects be achieved. Only thus can man gradually be changed from that point onward. Man shouted thus in the past because man had no understanding of his original corrupt disposition. Such are the impurities within man. What of your belief in God? Have you truly offered up your life? If you suffered the same trials as Job, none among you who follow God today would be able to stand firm. You'd all fall down. 
And there is, quite simply, a world of difference between you and Peter. Today, if half your assets were seized, you'd dare to deny the existence of God. If your son or daughter were taken from you, you'd run the streets crying foul. If your life reached a dead end, you'd try and take it up with God. All souls corrupted by Satan are under the control of Satan's domain. Only those who believe in Christ have been separated out, saved from Satan's camp and brought into today's kingdom. These people no longer live under Satan's influence. Even so, man's nature is still rooted in man's flesh. That is to say, that even though your souls have been saved, your nature is still of its old appearance. And the chance that you will betray me remains at 100%. That is why my work is so long-lasting, because your nature is too unshakable. Now you are all suffering as much as you can in fulfilling your duties. But an undeniable fact is this. Each of you is capable of betraying me and returning to Satan's domain. To its camp and going back to your old lives. At that time, it won't be possible for you to have a shred of humanity or appearance of a human being as you do now. In serious cases, you will be destroyed and furthermore be doomed eternally, never to be incarnated again, but severely punished. This is the problem laid before you. It feels as if God's word has pierced my heart with his judgment. The corruption exposed in these words is my true state. We are all this way. God's word reveals what's truly in our nature. Let's read two more passages. Brother Shu, you read. Hmm, okay. You must know what kind of people I desire. Those who are impure are not permitted to enter into the kingdom. Those who are impure are not permitted to besmirch the holy ground. Though you may have done much work and have worked for many years, in the end, if you are still deplorably filthy, it is intolerable to the law of heaven that you wish to enter my kingdom. From the foundation of the world until today, Never have I offered easy access to my kingdom to those who curry favor with me. This is a heavenly rule, and no one can break it. You must seek life. Today, those who will be made perfect are the same kind as Peter. They are those who seek changes in their own disposition and are willing to bear testimony to God and perform their duty as a creature of God. Only people such as this will be made perfect. If you only look to rewards and do not seek to change your own life disposition, then all your efforts will be in vain. And this is an unalterable truth. I decide the destination of each person not on the basis of age, seniority, amount of suffering, and least of all, the degree to which they invite pity. But according to whether they possess the truth, there is no other choice but this. You must realize that all those who do not follow the will of God will be punished. This is an immutable fact. Therefore, 
All those who are punished are so punished for the righteousness of God and is retribution for their numerous evil acts. All right, let's stop here for now. God's word reveals the contamination, the problem with belief, our desire to gain blessings and our satanic natures and dispositions that often lead us to sin. Impossible not to be convinced. Yes. God's word is indeed the truth. Amen. Even though when we believe in the Lord, our sins are forgiven and we return to God's presence. It doesn't resolve our satanic dispositions and our nature is still to resist God. When trials and refinements come that threaten our vital interests, we still, against our own will, blame, judge, and resist God, and even deny and betray God. Even if such people's sins are forgiven, are they gained by God? Have they gained God's approval? When we believe in the Lord, no one can see this clearly. So true. After I believed in Almighty God and experienced trials, refinement, pruning, and dealing, and understood some truth, I was able to see this. When I first believed in Almighty God, I gave up everything to perform duties in the church and was chosen to be a church leader. But my self-righteousness made me arbitrary in my duty. I couldn't accept pruning. I ended up disrupting the work of the church. And I was dismissed. I nearly fell apart. It was really hard after all my years of belief, after being a church leader, church elder, someone my superiors trusted, my brothers and sisters looked up to, to be removed? How could I face my brothers and sisters? I suffered while performing my duties for God. Now my reputation and status were gone. Where would I go from here? What was the point of doing my duties and believing in God? In my heart, I blamed God, argued with Him, and opposed him. I was constantly acting rebellious and resistant to God. But these statements from God convinced me, the chance that you will betray me remains at 100%. Betrayal is man's nature. They are absolutely true. This is really what people are like. That's right. No matter how passionately we corrupt humans serve God, no matter how many good deeds we do, how many sermons we give, or how hard we work, without experiencing God's judgment and purification, we still belong to Satan. The moment things get tough or the environment allows, our satanic nature acts up immediately. We start blaming and judging God or even betray God. This is our true state. God is holy and righteous. Only by escaping our satanic dispositions can we truly obey and fear God and enter the kingdom of heaven. People like us who still haven't had their satanic disposition purified are not able to enter the kingdom of heaven. After experiencing God's judgment, I understood some truth. Now I know how my satanic nature betrays God. I found that I have way too many satanic dispositions within almost like I am not a real person. I was far from meeting God's requirements. That's when my view on belief in God began to change. And I focused on pursuing the truth, using God's word to understand the satanic nature within me and how it makes me corrupt. Learning to forsake the flesh and live in a way that God approves of, slowly, my satanic disposition began to be purified, and I became more obedient to God. Thanks be to God. I genuinely experienced the depth of my corruption by Satan. I was resistant to God. 
I needed God's judgment and refinement. I needed God's salvation. Now I'm willing to endure anything to gain the truth. Nothing is more important. Amen. Thank God. This was a useful sermon. Sure was. Without the revelations of refinement and the judgment of God's word, it would be impossible to understand our satanic nature and very hard to clearly see what our essence is. It's impossible to see how much faith we really have in God, how much we obey God, under what circumstances we'd betray Him, and whether we belong to God or to Satan. Yeah. Today's fellowship makes me see that in the past our belief was greed for God's grace. We only serve God to satisfy our own conscience, and our faith is still contaminated by so many individual desires, hopes, and demands. These demands are hidden deep in our heart. They run deeper than sin and are the root cause of our resistance to God. We live under the control of these satanic dispositions. How can we say that we're freed of Satan's influence and saved? Yes, we rebel against God. We are unqualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. Attaining salvation isn't an easy thing to do. Accepting Almighty God's work in the last days isn't enough. If we believe in God, but don't experience God's judgment, our satanic disposition will remain, and we won't enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Thinking back on it, we thought that being saved once was the same as eternal salvation, and we could enter the kingdom of heaven. That was naive and ridiculous. Those were just ideas man came up with. If we hadn't accepted God's work in the last days, we would never understand what true salvation means or how to attain it. Mm. Religious people who believe in the Lord still believe that being forgiven for your sins means you are saved, and they are simply waiting for the Lord to raise them up to the kingdom of heaven. They don't know what real salvation is or understand God's righteous disposition or know who is qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. With confused faith like that, they are just believing in vain. It's such a shame. Before we who believe in Almighty God obtain the truth, we're on the brink of disaster. When trials come, we still complain and rebel against God. We still haven't been truly purified or attained salvation. Religious people think they can enter God's kingdom without accepting God's judgment in the last days. That's so unrealistic. Yes, it is. In the past, I was just like them, waiting to get into the kingdom of heaven. Thinking back, I realize it was a pipe dream. But weren't we all like that? Mm-hmm. Thanks be to God. After hearing everyone's fellowship, I see things more clearly. Thanks be to God. In my years of belief, I served God, suffered, and paid a price. I fellowshiped with others to solve problems. After I was tortured by the CCP, I did not deny God. After that, I did my duty as usual. So I thought I had the reality of the truth, and my life disposition had been changed. I thought I had truly been saved, that I would definitely enter the kingdom of heaven. But my wife's death exposed me. All I had learned over the years was just spiritual doctrine. I learned to work hard and do some good deeds. But my natures, to be arrogant, self-righteous, to lie, sin, and deceive, were still rooted deep inside me. There was no purification or change. When this big trial came, I still complained and blamed God, which proves that I can still rebel against and resist God. I'm still not obedient to God. 
I had only changed my actions and not my life disposition. How can I say that I am any different than the hypocritical Pharisees? Only after experiencing God's judgment, chastisement, trial, and refinement could I see clearly that forgiveness of my sins was not true salvation, and I did not qualify to enter the kingdom of heaven. Only by experiencing God's judgment, chastisement, trial, and refinement can the sinful nature and satanic disposition rooted deep in man be completely purified. Only through such experience can people understand the truth and know God and become someone who follows God's will. Only these people are qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven.